Hi, Steve from Recall Knowledge here. For this Foundry Quick Tip, we're going to look at how to leverage the loot objects we showed you how to set up in our last video into fully functional merchants. Now, if you're not familiar, make sure to check out that video as well, but you should be able to follow along even if you haven't seen it. While this video is primarily focused on using Pathfinder 2nd Edition as an example, because these features are built into the core system, there are modules that accomplish a similar effect in other systems, such as 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. So creating a merchant starts off the same as creating a normal loot object. Create a new actor, change the type to loot, and for the name, in this case, we're going to call it General Store, and hit Create New Actor. Once we hit Create New Actor, we see the loot sheet pop up. This time, we're going to change the sheet type from loot over to merchant. For the icon, let's go, we click the icon here. Uh, let's go to core data, uh, icons, environment, settlement, and let's just pick a little house looking building here for our general store. All right, once that's created, next, all we have to do is populate the store. For our general store, I'm just gonna populate it with a few items to show you how it's done. But in your game, you're probably going to want to go through and add all the items you think your players might want access to. So under the equipment, I'm going to click the magnifying glass to open the compendium browser filter to equipment. And I'm going to add some general items I think would be good to see in a general store. So let's start with rope. Let's add torch. Let's add rations. And each time I'm doing this, I'm just dragging and dropping the icon from the companion browser right into the general store, just as if it's any other actor sheet, because it is. And to top it off, let's end with a tent, a four person tent. All right, I think that's enough for now. Uh, let's do it real quick. Let's show you how to adjust the quantity. So when I dragged it, it was adding one. It did add seven rations. Uh, for rope, I'm going to increase that to five. And for torches, I'll increase that to 10. And we'll leave the rations in the tent as is. But you can see you can adjust the quantities for sale for your shop, just like that. All right, there it is. It looks good. So next, we need to expose the store for your players to interact with. Uh, there's different ways to do this, including just giving your players uh, permissions. If you go to configure permissions and make them an observer, it'll just show up in their actors tab and they can open it up and interact with it whenever you want. So to help with the immersion and the sense of being within a town, I prefer creating town maps. If I wanted to, I could take my general store, drag it to a spot on my map, and we'd be done. My players could interact with it just like they could with the loot actors from the last video, and they could click and interact with all the stores in the scene like this. I like this approach because it allows us to kind of trigger that downtime sort of mode that comes along with being in town, and the players can kind of click and window shop and browse as much as they want while they're in this scene. The disadvantage with using it like this specifically is you're covering up your map with these loot icons that make it kind of hard to see what's going on underneath. That's why I like to take it one step further and I encourage you to do the same. So let me remove the star real quick. On my map, you can see I have all of these map notes for each important location in town. Each one of these is linked with a journal entry that has all the information about that location. So for instance, I can open Blaze for Glades. And I can see in this note, I have a quick description of the store, maybe what it looks like, some of the lore information the players might want to know, along with a shop link. If you click this shop link, that's where you get to the actual merchant sheet and all the things that they have for sale. Now, the benefit to this approach is that the players are free to hide these map notes whenever they want, and they can see the beautiful art underneath and get a better sense of what the town looks like without all the clutter. If you have just tokens on the map, they don't have the ability to sort of do that on their own. So let's create a link for our general store. We're going to create a new journal entry and we're going to call it general store. Okay, it's going to pop up. Let's go ahead and add a description. I'm going to say this is the most general of stores, smiley face, and then shop link colon. Now this is where I'm going to add a link into the text field from the, the merchant that we've created. So. If I go to the Actors tab, I'll see my general store here. If I drag it into this text field, it's going to create the link, and then I can hit Save Entry, and we can see our shop link leads right to the store that we created a few minutes ago.
Next, we want to go to the journal entry and we want to take the, the journal entry and drag it onto our map in the proper location. It'll create a note pop up here. Um, I'm going to change the icon to like maybe um, a city and hit update map note. And then we can see our icon for the map changes to differentiate it from everything else around it. If I click it, it opens the general store journal entry we already made. The last step in this process is to go back to your journal entry. And we need to configure the permissions to make sure that your players are observers and can see the map note. Otherwise, it won't show to them when they load on this map. All right, with that, your player will now be able to see the store and interact with it. Let's switch over to the player view to see how to shop. All right, Clovis is an Otari and he's looking to buy some stuff from the general store. First, as a player, I'm going to click over here on the journal notes section. Uh, a little tip here, you can pin the notes with this choice right here to make them always visible or unpin them. It'll only be visible while you have it selected. I'm going to then open the general store icon, which we can see here, and go further into the general store link. And now I have access to the shop that we created. For Clovis, I'm going to purchase the torch. So I'm going to drag the torch from the store to my token. It's gonna to give me a pop-up and ask how many do I want to move? No, in this case, move actually means purchase. So I'm gonna click one and hit move items, okay? When I do that, it's going to do all the calculations behind the scenes. And we can see in the chat window, it actually says general store sells torch to Clovis. If I open Clovis's uh, sheet right here, when I go to his inventory under equipment, I will see the torch that he bought right here. And his money has been automatically deducted by one copper because he had a nice round 70 gold before this purchase. If, for instance, I took Clovis to a different store, like let's say Blaze for Glades, and I go to the shop, and I decide to instead buy something I can't afford, like a weapon potency plus two rune for 935 gold, if I drag that to my character sheet, but I look at the actual chat, I'll see. It says Clovis reaches for their coins, but comes up short. So it won't let your players buy something they don't have enough money to cover. And that's it. It is worth noting at this time that the merchants don't fully support selling. You can drag your items to them, but the money won't get automatically added to your VCs. So for now, make sure to manually adjust your gold after selling the object. But by doing this simple trick, you will make your players forget that they're just sitting at their computer playing a game. You will help whisk them away to whatever fantasy world you're actually playing. And this is the sort of thing where digital beats paper because automated shopping is much, much easier using these set of tools than digging through multiple source books to find the cost of whatever it is you're trying to buy. And giving that next level experience is exactly what these videos are all about. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Hi, Steve from Recall Knowledge here. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure to like and subscribe down below so you can get notified of more awesome content coming your way. Also, make sure to follow our channel's Twitter, at Recall Knowledge, for the latest information. Thanks for watching.